Mike Massimino always wanted to be an astronaut. So I was six years old when uh, Neil Armstrong walked on the moon. I remember watching that from my living room in Long Island, and uh, that uh, that really affected me in what was going on at that time. All the excitement, I can clearly remember uh, the space program, the moon landings, the astronauts were my heroes. I dressed up like an astronaut. Um, my mom made me a, a, my, an astronaut costume that I could wear, and I pretended like I was an astronaut. And I guess I just never grew up. And so began Mike's career of venturing into the great unknown. Over the past 17 years, he's flown two missions and spent over 30 hours spacewalking to deliver key upgrades and repairs to the Hubble telescope. The favorite, most incredible experience I've ever had was, was getting to spacewalk and work on the Hubble Space Telescope. Being in a spacesuit, you know, travel around the Earth 17,500 miles an hour, 45 minutes of bright, the brightest sunlight you can ever imagine, followed by 45 minutes of the darkest dark when you're over the dark side of the planet where it's nighttime. Uh, and going through that for you know eight hours or so while you're outside, magnificent view of the Earth and of the universe and the stars around you, of the moon. I really felt like I was looking into paradise. That's how beautiful our planet is. So to have that experience uh, is something I think about every day. And that's my number one <laughs> astronaut experience is spacewalking and looking at the planet Mike and other astronauts train here at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. They run through system checks and even navigate a miniature version of the International Space Station and do so in a low gravity environment. At the Neutral Buoyancy Laboratory, space travelers in training dive into the depths of this gigantic 40 foot deep tank in full gear and learn what it's like to work in the harsh vacuum of space. The most challenging thing for me, for me as an astronaut really was, was passing my swim test. You know, I never, I grew up in New York and was one of these skinny little kids that never really liked the water. I, I remember getting my letter from NASA when I, after I got a, you get a phone call saying you're selected as an astronaut and you say yes, absolutely. And then, you know, they send you a packet of information, you know, stuff you have to fill out and that kind of thing. And the opening, the letter of, you know, congratulations on being selected as an astronaut. Like the second paragraph dealt with the swim test. And now you had to get ready. The first things we're going to do is take a swim test so that we could go to water survival school with the Navy in Pensacola. And I'm like, what did I get myself into here? In order to, to, to do my job, uh, I needed to learn how to, to become like an Aquaman. You know? And uh, so, believe it or not, for me, that was probably the most challenging thing I had to do as an astronaut. While he remains on active duty, he does what he can on land to share his experience with others. He says Gene Krantz, the flight director from the precarious Apollo 13 mission, had the best advice for young people. I'm going to steal Gene Kranz's line. He was a flight director in Apollo 13. He says there's five words to remember for young people. The first one is dream. The next two words are aim high. And the third, the third thing, the next two words, which is the third point, is never surrender. And I think that's, that's the thing to remember, is that when you, you do poorly in something, you're not alone. Just about everybody that I know uh, has failed at things. It took me four tries to become an astronaut. I was rejected four times by NASA until I was accepted. So you can't, you can't let um, failure or not doing well stop you. And that's why successful people are successful, because everybody fails, but the people who are successful don't let that stop them. For It Ain't Rocket Science, I'm Daisy Gonzalez.